Hey everybody, I'm forward meteorologist Paul Hagen here in the Weather Center. we got a lot to talk about today. Our weather's going to be on a really wild ride over the next 24 hours or so. So we've got a lot of different maps to show you. Video blogs just the easier way to go, and we'll be keeping you updated on social media throughout the day. So let's start with an overview of what to expect here over the next 24 hours or so. It's going to be warm and windy today. Scattered rain showers, not really a big deal in terms of precipitation, but not a great day to take advantage of the warm weather because it's going to be so breezy. Wind gusts over 30 miles an hour possible. Thunderstorms move in from the west this evening. There's some severe weather potential there, especially west of I-65. Damaging straight line winds the main threat, but also enough wind energy that we have to talk about the possibility of isolated tornadoes. And then the cold air crashes back in. Brief freezing rain between midnight and early Sunday morning. A light glaze, I think mostly on elevated surfaces. We'll get into that part of the forecast momentarily as well. Kind of breaking it down hour by hour off and on showers today. It's not going to rain everywhere all the time. You're going to get rain this evening. It's going to be heavy at times and there is that severe weather potential as well. And then the changeover to freezing rain. We're not going to get snow out of the system. It's going to be sleet or freezing rain, which isn't terribly pleasant to have to deal with. So we're going to be focusing on that by about 24 hours from now, early Sunday morning. So let's get into some details here how things are going to shape up. First, temperature wise is going to warm up. Temperature started in the 50s this morning. We warmed up overnight. We're going to spend most of the afternoon in the mid to upper 60s, even topping out around 70. Look at Murray, Kentucky, where they're going to go from 70 by 4 o'clock down to 34 by 9.30 this evening. Metro Nashville is going to have the same thing, but from 9.30 until about 2 o'clock in the morning, that kind of sharp transition, a sharp temperature gradient, is what's driving the strength of this storm system. Look at these temperatures dropping so far below freezing by early tomorrow morning. Low 20s to the northwest of Nashville. That's why we're talking about the possibility of frozen precipitation on the back edge of this system. In terms of the wind gusts today, between 20 and 30 miles an hour for most of the day, but we're going to be seeing those gusty conditions again tomorrow as well as the wind direction just turns around out of the north as well. In terms of the timing of the severe weather threat, that's going to be moving in from the west after the sun goes down this evening. So let's break it down, look at a couple different forecast models here. Off and on showers, just kind of that hit and miss pattern, no real organization to it throughout the day. And then by early evening, we see in northwestern Middle Tennessee the beginning stages of that line of thunderstorms developing, and the individual storms are basically going to move along the line from southwest to northeast. The line itself will move west to east across the midstate. Moving into Metro Nashville around 9, 10 o'clock or so, and then advancing farther to the east, but with a diminishing severe weather threat after about 11 o'clock this evening. That's not the only forecast model we look at. A different one, it's called the HRRR, the High Resolution Rapid Refresh Model. I'm going to step through this hour by hour, and it has very similar timing for us, with scattered showers giving way to a better chance of stronger thunderstorms moving in. And again, for Metro Nashville, looks like the same timing, around 9, 10 o'clock or so, and then moving farther off to the east as we head towards about midnight. So if you wanted to kind of just average out the differences between the various models between 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. for western and northwestern Middle Tennessee, the greatest severe weather threat. It looks like around 9, 10 o'clock for Metro Nashville, but there's always a little bit of flexibility until the storms actually develop. We have to kind of take things with a grain of salt and kind of hedge our bets a little bit in terms of the specific timing. Later arrival, and again, not as great a severe weather threat for eastern Middle Tennessee. How bad are the storms going to be? That's also a complicated scenario. It depends on how much we warm up today and how much humidity comes along with that warm air. I showed you our in-house, our RPM model, the one that we use for Futurecast version of temperatures warming up to around 70 degrees or so. It also pushes the dew points. That's a good measure of humidity. It doesn't rely on the temperature, so no relative humidity. Just this number is what we need. Dew point, it at least needs to be 55 for severe thunderstorms to be possible. You'd want to see that over 60 if you were trying to design a severe weather scenario, and this has dew points up into the mid-60s before the storms arrive as we head into the evening hours. So that's more than sufficient, even if it's off by 5 degrees. That's going to be good enough for severe thunderstorms to at least be possible. Let's switch over to that other forecast model, and again, this HRRR shows that we're talking about air temperatures reaching up into the neighborhood of 70 degrees, so it's in rough agreement there, but even a degree or two difference if we maybe only make it up to the mid-60s. Instead of around 70, that reduces the size of the powder keg that's available for thunderstorms to potentially become severe. In terms of the moisture, it's exactly on the same page. Mid-60s for those dew points, and that is definitely not what we want to see. 
So we add up all the different factors in terms of temperatures and humidity levels and wind speed and wind direction throughout the atmosphere. It gives us these different statistics that we can measure, first of all, in terms of the amount of energy in the atmosphere. That's a statistic, easy for me to say, we call CAPE, Convective Available Potential Energy. I wrote yesterday, it sounds like word salad, but it just basically means storm fuel. You don't want to be in the blue on this map. So we're going to wind it forward in time from 5 o'clock this evening, and you see that those numbers get a little bit better. The blue disappears as we head through the evening, but the gray is still good enough. And this is just for surface-based energy. You want to look at just the lowest about half mile of the atmosphere or so, and then you see a more ominous scenario. It doesn't have to necessarily go up right from ground level. Just the lowest levels of the atmosphere, you get those air parcels to go up. They're going to develop into thunderstorms, and again, the blue moves towards at least the western half of the mid-state in time for the storms to arrive at least to the I-65 corridor and then the numbers continue to drop off dramatically. That's why we're not as concerned about severe weather potential in eastern Middle Tennessee. In terms of adding up those numbers, we get these different statistics, the supercell composite parameter. Sounds fancy, but basically what it tells us is how likely is the atmosphere going to be able to produce supercells? Again, you don't want to be in the blue here, but a significant portion of the mid-state is in the blue as that storm system moves across the mid-state early this evening, especially west of I-65. This statistic shouldn't require any explanation, the significant tornado parameter. Again, you don't want to be in blue here. You definitely don't want to be in yellow. So as those storms are developing, that's when they're going to have the greatest potential to rotate. More of a straight line wind threat taking over as the storms advance farther to the east, but you still see those little flecks of yellow embedded within the area of blue. So we're going to have to watch very carefully for signs of rotation as all of that continues to move farther and farther east. This is the forecast sounding for Nashville as of... We see this is for 9 o'clock this evening, and that shows those numbers, the CAPE numbers, more than substantial enough to produce some strong thunderstorms and the amount of rotation of the atmosphere. This is for the real weather geeks here. Those helicity numbers, over 400, not what you want to see, forecasting the supercell composite and the significant tornado parameter to be pretty high. But let's wind the clock forward just one hour, and maybe the storms are just a little bit later to arrive and it's going to chew on the information here for a second and pop those numbers up and everything is lower. So even an hour's worth of difference is going to make a significant difference in terms of our severe weather potential. An ensemble forecast, mashing up a bunch of different forecast models. This one has a slightly better scenario for us. It keeps the best instability, again, that storm fuel farther off to our southwest, but still about a 50-50 chance that the atmospheres are ready to go for severe weather. In terms of the supercell composite parameter, at least being good enough. So this is just a snapshot of, is the atmosphere gonna be ready? And it's saying about a 50 to 70% chance, about a 70% chance, in fact, that the atmosphere is gonna be able to produce those severe thunderstorms. And the significant tornado parameter, it's estimating that that number is going to be at least two, maybe four, and that's the level at which we really do have to be concerned about the potential for severe thunderstorms. Add it all up, the Storm Prediction Center has outlined just a slight risk of severe weather. It's hard to get all this stuff to come together this time of year, so it's just level two out of five. I think within that, they're going to have to outline an enhanced risk, maybe including southwestern Middle Tennessee, but especially back into West Tennessee and northern Mississippi. Kind of cuts off just east of Nashville, the rest of the mid-state, and marginal risk. Hail, not the main concern until you get farther into West Tennessee and again back into Mississippi. Tornado risk, two to five percent. That sounds real low but that's higher than you want to see for a tornado risk and again this is the risk of a tornado within 25 miles of any one spot within those risk areas again we're talking about statistics about statistics overall we just need to plan on staying weather aware the damaging wind threat is the main concern as we head into the evening the threat should be pretty much done by 11 p.m maybe midnight Damaging wind threats to see on the chart here are going to be the main concern as we head into those evening hours and early overnight then the cold air catches up, so we got to talk briefly about the potential for icing conditions as we head into early tomorrow morning. The rain moves to the east, the storm threat diminishes, but that pink area, mostly freezing rain, maybe a little bit of sleet mixed in, and that winds down from west to east as we head through early tomorrow. The forecast model, again using the RPM model here, indicates the potential for a quarter inch to a half inch of ice. I'm not quite buying that because I think the moisture is going to be pretty limited by the time the cold air catches up. A different forecast model really goes crazy with it and produces close to an inch of ice accumulation northwest of Nashville. Again, I don't think that's likely, but the National Weather Service offices in southern Kentucky have issued a winter weather advisory just in case. The ground is going to be warm, the ground is going to be wet, so we're not talking about a significant potential for any type of icy accumulation, but it's still something that we're going to keep a very close eye on as we head into 
tomorrow morning. Dan Thomas is going to be here tracking that in the morning if you need to worry about it. Then the cold air crashes in. Highs tomorrow only around 30. The wind chill is going to be stuck in the 20s. Real quick, a look ahead at Christmas. Christmas morning, the European forecast model says it's just going to be pretty cold and dry. The American forecast model says it's going to be wet and significantly warmer. So we'll keep you posted on that as that weekend gets closer. But we're going to watch things very carefully for the next 24 hours around here.